This week, Michelle and Lori head over to Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service in Wyndham, Maine to get a new Roadmaster Shock Absorber package installed on their grand design Imagine. As you know, we love holding contests and Jeff Johnston meets up with one of our big contest winners as they were camping not far from his house. And with camping comes campfire cooking and this week Jeff prepares his world famous sausage and beans with moose drool beer. Later, Mark Polk from RV Education 101 shows us the proper way to level your travel trailer. Plus, our super noble raffle to benefit care camps, special oncology camps for children with cancer. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available as sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Lori. For Rolling on TV. Today we're going up to Windham, Maine to Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service. And we're going up there to have a couple of things installed on Emma, our grand design. And then we'll be bringing her home tomorrow. Randy, the service tech on our project, handles this 150 pound box like it's a bag of potatoes. Dennis is also working on our project. And what is our project? After learning that most travel trailers don't have shock absorbers and that travel trailers can experience shaking on the road that measures 3.2 on the earthquake Richter scale, we decided to install the Roadmaster Shock Absorbers and Comfort Ride Slipper Spring System. While Randy and Dennis are installing the Roadmaster System, let's find out more about Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service. They have a huge inventory here, and Dan Crofty, the owner, has kindly agreed to show us around. Yes, welcome to Maine. This is a 29GO, go, 29GO. It's got a beautiful open deck to put your ATVs or motorcycles. It's got, uh, use it for a deck after. You can, uh, there's a cooking station out there, television. We just got a Solus from Winnebago. We've already sold a few of them. We got our first one in, and it's the old style VW West Valley uh, with the pop up. But what a beautiful layout. Uh, Mini Winnies, uh, we can't keep them in stock. They're Class C. Fit and finish is beautiful. They've had a great reputation for oh, a long time. Ter the terrific, minis. terrific. Uh, Maybach is a Nexus. Uh, that's that's a sold unit and uh, uh, very very nice unit. Uh, Alliance. We're we're the fifth wheel capital of, of New England here at Lee's. We have three lines. We got the uh, Montana. We got the Cougar. We got the Reflection, and we got the Solitude. These are the travel trailers here. We have, we're a big grand design dealer. We, we love the grand design. Uh, transcends, imagines, reflections. I remember when they came out with the Transcend. Wasn't it about three years ago in Louisville yeah. they introduced it? Yes. Little tabs and tags are on fire. I mean, we bring in 12 and they're gone within a couple weeks. Uh, we just sold our first GeoPro, so we're pretty excited to rock with that. It's a beautiful unit. So this is, as far as you can see, we purchased 20, 20 acres, and, 20 acres and we'll probably have seven or eight as full RV, full of RVs. So it's, it's going to be uh, impressive and we're doing the PDI facility down here. We have a big rental fleet and uh, motorhomes and travel trailers. We'll bring the travel trailer right to your site. Uh, we'll show you how to use it. A really good way of seeing if you like it. Um, when I purchased the place, we really put an emphasis on service, so I added uh, uh, eight more bays, uh, drive-through, uh, large, large addition to go with the uh, present service building, and uh, we're we're trying to find some really good RV techs. We're just growing so fast. So if anybody's out there that wants a great career and and uh, wants a great place to work, uh, give me a call at Lee's Family Trailer. Okay, let's check back in on our Roadmaster suspension install. Almost done. Here's a tip. The U-bolts don't come with the suspension kit as they often don't need new ones. However, this is a really good time to inspect your U-bolts. If they're corroded, it's a good time to replace them. 
In our case, the job did need longer U-bolts, which held it up for a couple of hours. So just uh, be aware of that. Also, be aware that this lifts the trailer, in our case, three inches. So we had to make sure that our weight distribution system didn't need adjusting. And it did not. It was fine. In order to capture the effectiveness of the suspension, before we had the install done, we placed a container of water inside and drove down, very slowly, a bumpy road. Notice the rug on the left. After the installation of the suspension system, we went down that same road to see what happens with the water now. I think what was more interesting is what was happening to the chair on the left at the rug. That's the slider. You can see less bounce after the installation than before, which means the trailer should last longer, components should last longer, less shake in the trailer overall. So we just left Lee's family trailer in Wyndham, Maine, and they installed the Roadmaster suspension system. And we're just on the highway now. She feels really good. She's three inches higher than she was before. Feels rock solid, very nice to drive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That truck just went by us. I didn't feel it at all. That's a big, big benefit. Anything that causes less anxiety while you're driving, isn't that what it's all about? Thank you very much to Roadmaster for the suspension system and to Lee's family trailer for helping us get it onto our Emma Grand Design. And we're also very thankful to get her home again. Bye for now, Michelle and Laurie for Rolling on TV. Aquacam Possums, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. follow our show, you know that we have quite a few giveaways for different prizes. A couple of months ago, along with our partners at Carefree of Colorado, we gave away a Carefree of Colorado electric powered awning. Well, as luck would have it, the winners are just a few miles away from our home here in Eugene, Oregon. So we thought it would be kind of fun to run up there, catch up with them and see how they're enjoying their new awning. So let's head up there and meet Joe and Helen Hesketh. The Columbia Riverfront RV Park is the Hesketh's current abode on the road. It's a fine facility with a fantastic view of the Columbia River and its traffic, and a great place to hang out for a while. Joe and Helen, it's good to meet you. Good morning. Good morning. And congratulations on winning your carefree awning. Oh, it's been and great. It's working it's, out it's okay. Working fine. Just okay. need to get this zip locker work the thing working. Okay, right. so oh. we got to get the zip locker uh, shade device on. Okay. Right. Correct. That's the project for this morning. That's this morning. Yeah, this morning. What we're supposed to be doing. Okay, great. So let's get on it, and we'll see if we can't okay. make it work. Okay, let's go. Okay. The carefree awning installation went well, and it operates just as it should. Next, the Hesketh still had to figure out the zip blocker shade accessory installation. You better take this off here. Take that off there. I was the only person tall enough to see the awning mount feed slot, so I stepped in to help out. The Hesketh's daughter and son-in-law were camped next door and also helped with the job. What's that?
With the zip blocker successfully installed, we sat down to learn more about the Hesketh's and their RVing history. We got our first RV in 1978. Had a little mini Winnie, it was uh, 19 feet long, I think, with eight kids. And uh, we kept that thing for 17 years, and that's when we started this family camping tradition. This is a 1998 uh, Sun, uh, test Sun Cruiser. It was a uh, 97 Ford engine. We bought it in 1999, and we've had it ever since. We've got only got 92,000 miles on it, but we're not full timers, so we've got we got lots of places we travel, as you see there. So we use it a lot. I did. We've got a lot of rallies and things too, because we're very involved with the motorhome club. So but we, we did take a one trip across the country. Um, and that was quite a trip. <laughs> well, we're known, we're known for being a, a couple. As you notice, we have a license from the state of Washington as a couple. We've, got, uh, we've been writing love letters to one another every single day since 1974, after we went on a marriage kind of weekend, which kind of changed our lives a little bit. Uh, we're very much uh, known for holding hands all the time, every place we go. go ahead. Well, the, fa the family camping trip, we have a reunion every um, year. We just finished our 33rd year with our eight kids and some of our 35 grandkids and three or four of four of our, well, five of our great grandchildren. We had this year. Yeah, so. And we go out once a month to, we belong to an RV group that's called the Evergreen Winnies. And we as a group go out all over and spend the weekend together and Sometimes we sightsee, sometimes we just sit around and play cards, eat a lot of food, but we have very good friends that, through that group. And then sometimes we just go out on our own. But we go out 12 months of the year. I always like to go by the water, as which is where we are today doing this interview, right by the water. That's one of my very favorite things to do. I enter contests all the time, and every now and then you win something, you know, so we want to zip the Daytona 500 one year just because we paid our bill with a credit card somewhere, so I don't know. <laughs> Keep trying to do stuff, so. Well, I thought I had, to, I was surprised when I won the contest, because it came, the notice came on April Fool's Day, and I almost didn't open the email, I just said, you have won. I said, sure I won, what did I win? <laughs> and as I read it, I said, this sounds more serious. I think maybe it is for true. So that I do, we have won the thing. So the more I looked at it, and then I said, yeah, this is legitimate. We have won the order. I told her I was so excited about it. because I just thought the idea of having something remote with electronic would be wonderful at this age, at our age, to keep doing, doing it. So. And then he told me, and I said, you did what? Because <laughs> I didn't even know he had entered the contest. <laughs> So the next time you see a contest and rolling on TV, make sure you enter it because you could be the winner. It's great fun when a contest prize goes to someone who can really use it and will share it with friends and family. Congratulations, Joe and Helen. For more information about Carefree of Colorado products, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Having cancer shouldn't mean giving up the joys of childhood. Care Camps helps children with cancer remember what it's like to just be a kid. Roll on TV and Forest River are supporting Care Camps with our special raffle. With your donation, you're entered to win this one-of-a-kind Forest River No Boundaries travel trailer. It's a chance for these deserving kids to enjoy themselves and a chance for you to win this eye-catching Super Novo. If you enjoy camping, don't you think these kids should have the same chance too? For more information, visit our website at rollingontv.com. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid and Norcal refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. 
We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. So it's a beautiful weekend out here in camp and it's time to get some dinner going. So we have the Dutch oven set up. We got the coals that are, boy, they're, yeah, they're ready to go. Uh, and our ingredients are all lined up. So we'll uh, get started here and, and show you how we make up our Dutch oven beans, potatoes, and sausage. We get things going with a homemade fire starter under the briquette chimney. This handy device kicks off the briquettes without using petroleum type fire starter chemicals. Next, we cut up three small potatoes into bite-sized chunks. For serving convenience, we cut two packages of chicken bratwurst sausages into four chunks each. So we'll put a little bit of olive oil in the pan here to heat up. Doesn't take much because the sausage is going to have its own goop in there, of course dump in our sausage. This is some very nice uh, chicken with oh, a couple of different spices. But we use, we like chicken sausage because it's a little bit less fat. You don't absolutely have to brown the sausage first depending on the type, but this is uncooked sausage. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of brown on this before we throw the beans and the potatoes in and everything else. Mmm, smells pretty good already. Beer bread is our complement to the sausage and beans. A temporary foil liner makes a good spot for blending the bread mix. We use a local brew to help flavor the bread. It's a bit of a mess, but it works. Rub a little butter on your hands to help keep the dough from sticking. The Lodge Dutch ovens come pre-seasoned, but we rubbed in some butter to help keep the bread from sticking. Unceremoniously plop the dough into the pan, leave it in a lump, cover, and it's good to go. All right, things are starting to look a little bit brown, and man, is it smelling good. Time to pull the lid off, and it looks like the sausage is browned up nicely, so we're going to move this off to the side and add the potatoes that we cut up earlier. And we'll get those a little bit pre-cooked before the beans go in. All right, we'll start with the chili beans and the black beans and a little bit of garbanzos for, uh, for a light little bit of color. Same with the uh, kind of white bean. A little bit of corn for color, a little more garbanzos, a little bit of this uh, uh, Ninkasi Special Beer Run IPA, uh, just to add a little bit of moisture to the whole thing. Worked in the beer bread, ought to do just fine here too. And then of course we stir that stuff up, get the potatoes and everything going. Cover it up and we'll see what happens in a little while. Meanwhile, it's time to take a look at the uh, beer bread. It, it, is, uh, it is puffing up nicely. Started up a few more coals here. The coals started burning down. We, we began the first coals a little early, so we started a few more, added them on here, and uh, it looks like everything is perking along just fine. Okay. Well, the beer bread is coming along nicely, but it's starting to get, it's a little brown on the bottom, but it's okay. So what we did was we moved all of the coals from the bottom up here on the top to put the heat mainly down, down, down off the top of the bread. We're getting close, things ought to be just about ready here. Hmm. Water's boiling. It's 
smell is really good. Everything looks like it's blending together nicely. All right, first of all, the beer bread is about done. Chewy crust and a robust interior texture make this bread a terrific side dish to stews and the like. All right, this is about done. It's been boiling for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Get a few chunks of the sausage in there. Feel how hot that is on the bottom of my hand. Looks pretty darn good. We have the bean mix with corn and whatnot and the sausage, chicken sausage, so it's a little bit healthy. And beer bread, a one pot wonder. All things considered, not an all bad way to start a meal for a, a, an evening of camping. Can definitely recommend uh, Dutch ovens as a, uh, uh, an addition to your camping supplies. Cheers. For more information about Dutch oven cooking, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. I'm Mark Polk and today I want to talk about and demonstrate how to level your travel trailer at the campground. For today's demonstration, we'll be using this Keystone Passport travel trailer. Let's start right now. The first thing to do when you arrive at your campsite is position the RV on the site and level it. Lots of folks use blocks of wood to level their travel trailer, but there are products like these stackers and Lynx levelers designed to make the job of leveling the trailer quick and easy. Position the trailer on the site so you have access to all of the campground connections and so there is room for the slide outs to open without obstructions. Check for overhead clearance when positioning the RV on the site. Check to see if the travel trailer is level from side to side using a carpenter's level or bubble levels mounted on the trailer. If one side is lower than the other side, use the leveling blocks to raise the side that is too low. Just lay several of the blocks out and stack the interlocking pads until you achieve the desired height you want. With the trailer positioned where you want it and level from side to side, chalk the trailer wheels so the trailer cannot roll in either direction. Next, disconnect the trailer from the tow vehicle. There are products like this trailer tongue jack stand by Valterra products or this automatic flip jack foot by Fastway trailer products that are designed to support the trailer tongue without worrying about it sinking into the asphalt or ground on a hot or rainy day. Now use the trailer tongue jack to level the trailer from front to rear. The only thing left to do is to stabilize the trailer. Lots of travel trailers come equipped with stabilizer jacks already mounted to the trailer's frame. If not, there are portable models available. Keep in mind that stabilizer jacks are only designed to help stabilize the trailer from rocking and wobbling when you move around inside. They are not designed to support the weight of the trailer. Put a leveling block under each stabilizer jack for secure footing and lower the stabilizer until it makes firm contact with the ground, then give it about one additional turn. That's how easy it is to level your travel trailer. After a few trips to the campground, you'll be proficient in no time at all. Remember to always chalk the trailer wheels and never park or attempt to set the trailer up on an incline or on a grade. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. For more information on anything you've seen on the program, along with additional videos, stories, and news, plus some great contests, visit our website at rollingontv.com. And remember, you can also watch Rolling On TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Vimeo, and YouTube, as well as on any of our station's streaming media services. For complete coverage information, click on the Where to Watch link on our website. As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>